Well, after the emotions of stage one and Mark Cavendish's long-awaited win, he finally got that and we moved on to stage three of the presidential tour of Turkey. Starting inland with a, a long run along the plateau, a couple of climbs along the way, two intermediate sprints to be contended with before reaching the harbour side at Alanya. Temperatures at the beginning of the day around about 8 Celsius but rising to 19 and 20 on the coast. A very different feel from now on in in this race. But it's a venue for holiday makers and it very much felt like a party atmosphere today. Four riders decided to take it on. Primary amongst them, Ika Ballerin of Uskadel Uskadi. In fact, he took the first of the day's intermediate sprints. Eventually, we had four riders that went on to try and form a breakaway. They did so for much of the day. Humberto Poli of Team Novo Nordisk, Castillo, the Mexican champion from Wildlife Generation, and Venturuti of Androni Giacatoli. He was looking for mountains points and indeed find them on two occasions today, taking both of the day's climbs ahead of Castillo, the Mexican. Venturuti then with the first Category 3 test, garnering three points, and then five came his way on the second and final of the day's climbs. No time to take it easy. The peloton were in colour order rather early, and with 60 kilometres to go, there was a danger that the breakaway may be caught. They held on for the final intermediate sprint, the Turkish beauty sprint. Not much beauty around here on this uh, open highway, but it'll become more of a feature and living up to its name, this particular competition, the deeper we get into the race with the Roman edifice that will surely grace some of those sprint points. Yeah. Well, it was Venturuti adding yet more prize money to his fund, having taken two climbs, he took that final sprint. But really, it was the big one we were waiting for. And after Mark Cavendish had done a job yesterday, we felt that Jasper Philipson would surely start as favourite. Andre Greipel, with the best lead-out train here with Israel Startup Nation, was determined to get himself into the right place at the right time. Handshakes all round for the breakaway as they move to the right-hand side of the road. Across Tailwind, it would be at the very last. The most protected side of the road would be on the left-hand side, and that was favoured by our three favourites. Cavendish, Greipel and Philipson. Well, as expected, Israel Startup Nation it was that uh, set the approach pace. A long line of talent to lead Andre Greipel potentially to a superb drop-off point. Jasper Philipson ran out of teammates and found himself just boxed in ever so slightly on Greipel's wheel. Behind him, Mark Cavendish wearing the leader's blue jersey. Cavendish popped out, locked Philipson in and essentially threw away the key. And then Mark Cavendish just opened it up, centre of proceedings, centre stage yet again, and doubled up his tally. Wonderful result for Mark Cavendish. Two days in a row, and he could not have looked happier. Underscoring his greatness from yesterday, Jesper Philipson fast finishing, but having been locked in, bad position, cost him dear. Maybe he'll take it tomorrow into Khmer, we shall see. Cavendish finishing ahead of Philipson. Polish champion Anilkowski and uh, Alverson with Andrew Greipel rounding out the top five. Hugs all round, nobody could deny Mark Cavendish that. Well, it was a long gap, wasn't it, from 2018 until yesterday when he won and all of a sudden he doubles up the tally. Great to see. Mark Cavendish then leads this race by an enhanced margin courtesy of the bonus seconds factored in. He has an eight second advantage over Philipson. The high ground will mean that these time gaps mean very little, but Mark Cavendish will lead again as we head towards Khmer. Another sprinting day in the offing. Couple of lumps and bumps, but it should be for the fast men, and it will be amazing.